Good morning. Let's start. So in today's good morning session. Good morning, Sunil. In today's session, what we will do is we'll see what is V center and how to solve and configure this again. Right? Okay, so as I explained in last session, recollect a few things. Why you need a vCenter? For a couple of reasons. One is centralized management. Another one is the features that vCenter has got, the uh, high availability, distributed resource scheduling, fault tolerance, distributed switch, vSAN, and replication, and protection failover and a lot of other stuff managing the esxi host upgrades so all these things you can do through vcenter okay so uh, till 6.5 yeah basically i worked on 3.5 and I never worked on 4 i started working on 5.0 5.1 5.5 6.0, 6.5. Now we are at 6.7, and last week they announced 7.0. <clears throat> right? 7.0 still not yet released. Uh, they announced it. But I haven't seen downloads available to test. So now we are at 6.7. Remember. Okay. So till 6.5 till 6.5 vcenter can be deployed on windows server as an application okay along other option is along with that other option is custom appliance what is what do you mean by appliance it's custom linux machine where you will run your vcenter application on top of a linux machine customized by vmware you need to download the appliance and start running the appliance okay and till i guess they introduced in appliance in 5.5 i didn't remember exactly but yeah on 5.5 they introduced Imagine appliance. Now, in 6.7, it is mandatory that you should use appliance only. You cannot use the vCenter server. It is available. You can download it and test it. I haven't tested, but not sure. The so recommended is appliance only. And all the previous versions I've seen, uh, vCenter is running on top of one Windows server, and if something goes wrong, log into the Windows server and do the troubleshooting. Now, you have to learn basic Linux as well if you want to work on vCenter appliance. Okay, so in this session, what we will do is on 6.7. Okay, we are we are basically practicing everything on 6.7 right so how you can install the 6.7 vcenter server appliance and configure it and manage it for your day to day so today we'll see how to install and configure and then from tomorrow onwards we'll start the networking concepts okay let's start so what i need i need my base esxi so login so if you go to host sorry storage sata browse iso i have already uploaded vcenter server appliance 6.7 yesterday i uploaded this into our data store so let me go to vms and where is my active directory this is my active directory server power on
Okay. So, once the system is up, or oh, yesterday we forget one step, we'll do it now. We'll enable the RDP and we'll access it from outside. I don't want to use this console. See? Man. Okay, let's see. Normally you will not get this full screen if you don't install VMware tools. Okay, and set. Strange man. Okay. So No, 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 I don't want to connect to any machine. I want to enable RDP. See somewhere, remote, sorry, not remote management, remote desktop, allow, apply, done. So what's the IP? 55, right? So come out. Close this console. One sixty eight thirty dot fifty five. Let's see. Okay, so you got the fully qualified domain name when you log in. Yeah, server is up and running. <clears throat> now, what I will do, I will mount this. What I did yesterday, I went to edit, edit settings and whatever the ISO that I have uploaded in the data store connected to this virtual machine. Now it is automatically mounted here. Okay, so let me go inside UI installer. It's okay, let's see. Let me run this. So normally it should run via autoplay. Somehow it is not working, not an issue. So VMware vCenter Server Appliance 6.7 installer. So what do you want to do? You want to install a new vCenter server or upgrade or migrate or the existing one or you want to restore it if something goes wrong. I want to install it. Install. First, you need to deploy the appliance. Once it, once the appliance is deployed, then you need to configure the appliance. Where you will deploy the appliance? So let me quickly draw the picture. So imagine, why you need a vCenter? For centralized management. So this is your Production VCSA dot this is your V center. And I said I have three ESX servers. Let me shrink it down a little bit. I have three ESX servers, namely East US VR ESXA zero one. 
sorry, let's just clear. These are the three SXS servers. So all the three SXS we can manage it from vCenter. And what is the IP? 192, 168, 30.51. What is the IP? Second one, 192, 168, 30.52. And what is the IP? 192, 168, 30.53. Now, what is this IP? 192, 168, 30.50. Agree? And I have one more server, which is working as East USPR Windows here AD01. What is IP? 192.168.30.55. This is the setup so far. Okay. This is one VM. This is one other VM. This is another VM. This is another VM. Where I have deployed, go back all the virtual machines. One, two, three, four. These are the four VMs which I have mentioned here, right? So, what about this? I said this is an appliance. So, appliance also will be deployed as a VM here on my main host. You're, you're getting my point? Appliance is a Linux server, customized Linux server. It is also a VM inside this main ESXS server and will assign this IP. Okay, let's go ahead and deploy the appliance. Next, accept the license agreement and <coughs> depreciated deployment model, it's fine. So, embedded platform service controller, external platform service controller. There are two types of platform service controllers. I'll select the embedded one. I'll explain what it is later on. Next, and what is the East US PR VCSA dot done. And give some password for your uplets. This is the host name and it runs on 443 and your password. Next. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. My bad. Where you want to deploy the appliance? Okay, 192, 168, 1.151. This is where I will go and deploy it. This is my main host, right? And root and the password. So, for this host, where you are deploying, inside this host you are deploying. So those credentials I have to provide here. My bad. Okay. Next. Yes. Now, what is the VM name? So, East US PR VCSA dot. This is the VM name I want to give it. And what is the root password? Right? This is your appliance root password. Next. Has left. Okay. So, what kind of deployment you are selecting? Now, as an organization, you should know how many ESXA host, how many VMs you are expecting. So, in my current scenario, I want to deploy small one because I am planning for not 100 hosts. Oh, you can you can have up to 10 hosts. Then it is tiny is fine, man. Let's go with tiny. Because in my lab environment, 10 hosts is fine. And 100 VMs I can run. This is okay. But based on your customer environment, 
if, if the customer environment is too big, so you can have up to 1,000, 2,000 host. Okay, so default, fine. Next, where you want to place your appliance? SSD. Enable thin disk if you want. Okay, not, not an issue. I have a adequate space inside the appliance. Now, here is the configuration. I'll put it on VLAN 30. Right? VLAN 30. What is the VM name? What is the VM name? ECUS PR with CSA dot. This is the host name, fully qualified domain name I've mentioned. And what is IP? 192.168.30.55. So if this fully qualified domain name, do you think it is going to be resolved? Because appliance is Linux, so it won't resolve. What I have to do? I have to go to DNS on the server. Okay, so create an entry. East US PR with C S A one ninety two one sixty eight thirty dot fifty is a IP which I am assigning. Entry has been created in your DNS static. So sorry for not fifty five, fifty. Fifty five we have already assigned to Active Directory server. So subnet the gateway. What is the DNS server? It's a DNS server. Okay. So IPv4 under VLAN 30 is the name and we center server IP address, subnet, gateway, fine, and the DNS server, this Windows server IP. Next, right? This is the your appliance configuration. It is ready to deploy. So finish. So what it will do, it's initializing the deployment, deploying appliance, 4%. Let's minimize this and see import app. It is deploying here. You'll see eight virtual machine. So far we have seven and it is creating eight virtual machine. Oh my God, took. 279 GB fine it's okay I have a plenty of space okay so it's deploying it will take some time okay so we'll 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 leave it we'll, we'll leave it meanwhile we will discuss few things So when I'm deploying vCenter server appliance, okay, vCenter server appliance, I got a window saying, select the type of deployment, right? So I've selected, second one is external. I selected embedded deployment. Embedded deployment means it is showing one picture on the side and it has two two components. One is vCenter, other one is there are two components. Right? What are those two components? Any idea? Just a second, I'm getting one call. Just a second. Internet stopped working. That's right. It's okay, yeah. So, what we are discussing, I said when I'm deploying the appliance, I got this option and I said, I'll, I'll select the default one embedded and I'll go ahead with the deployment. That deployment is now still in progress. Okay, 
But meanwhile, let's discuss what is this. If you observe embedded deployment and it has two components in the picture. Means you need to understand your vCenter server appliance is basically having two components. One is platform service controller, another one is your vCenter server application. Why you need a two components? I mean, earlier when uh, vCenter is being deployed in 5.0 and 5.1 that time, vCenter is not a single ISO file. vCenter is a combination of two, three ISO files. You need to download three different files for your vCenter to be up and running. One is SSO. In, I'm talking about 5.0 or 5.1. I didn't remember exactly, but during that time. One is SSO, another one is vCenter, and another one is Update Manager. Update Manager. These are the three ISO files or EXE files which you have to download it from vmware.com. Okay, later on in 6.0, they consolidated everything and they released in one single file called vCSA or vCenter server in a single bundle in that it has all the three components okay so in 6.7 it is also having same thing it has all the three components imagine okay this sso has been renamed in later on versions till 5.5 or 5.1 it is called as single sign-on later on they renamed it as platform service control okay it will perform certain tasks and vCenter will perform okay, so certain uh, task. Uh, okay, so the SSO in older version has been replaced with platform service controller in 6.0, I can say, and vCenter server will remain as a vCenter server. Okay, and you, ha you have to understand platform service controller will do certain tasks, and your vCenter server will do certain tasks. We'll understand what it is. Okay, so platform service controller, one of the tasks is license management. License management means, let's say I have a vCenter and it has 100 hosts. 100 hosts are added into the vCenter. Okay, my first question is, do we require a license for vCenter or not? Yes, we require license. So vCenter has a license and based on the license, you'll get the type of features, right? Standard, Enterprise, Enterprise Plus, Platinum, XYZ, ABC, whatever the license model is that we will discuss later on. But based on the license model or based on the type of license, you will get the features. Now vCenter has got the highest licensing model, Enterprise Plus. So it will support all the features. But the condition is you have a hundred host, all the hundred hosts must have the same kind of license, then only you'll get all the features. No, 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 no. I will divide this cluster, sorry, hundred hosts into two clusters. Cluster two and cluster one. Cluster one is production, cluster two is development. So in production environment, I will use all the features. In development environment, no boss, I don't require all the features. I want I don't want to spend much time. Or sorry, much much cost my bad okay so in production environment you have uh, 60 hosts let's say for example and all the 60 hosts are equipped with or licensed with enterprise plus okay and you will get all the features because your vCenter has all the highest license and your your ESXA hosts also applied with highest license which is enterprise plus but when it comes to development environment you have around 40 hosts all these 40 hosts are licensed with standard. Let's say standard. One of the difference between the standard and enterprise is you cannot use vSAN. Let's say for example. vSAN is one of the feature where you'll use via vSAN. So enterprise plus supports vSAN and standard doesn't support vSAN. Now who will who will make sure all these things? the service which is running on the platform service controller 
responsible for licensing management it will make sure on which host what kind of license is applied and what kind of features are that I need to allow on that particular host and if if someone is running with the trial license or, uh, or the test licenses or maybe the license is for three years and the license got expired and system need to notify the users or give some warnings on the screen these kind of stuff will be managed by license management service within the platform service controller understand what I'm saying okay yes, yes. second task let's go to the second task your vCenter server I said centralized management Centralized management means you have a hundred host. You no need to log into hundred host every time. You simply log in into vCenter, and you will be able to access all the hundred host without any additional username and password. First of all, how you will log into your vCenter? Because the company has a 200 people, and out of 200, let's say uh, 20 people or 15 odd people working on VMware team. And out of 15, five people are L3 access, and around seven people L1 access, and three people L0 monitoring access. So, how we will maintain these permissions and stuff? That is different story that we will discuss in role-based access control. But you have a 15 people. All the 15 people can log into the vCenter. Yes, you can log in. That vCenter is connected with your Active Directory in the back end. Yes, it is connected with Active Directory. And you log into your Windows Server using your Active Directory account, your company name slash username and password, right? Same username and password you can use to log in into vCenter. Okay, but vCenter doesn't have any Active Directory credentials, but it has only federation services enabled between your vCenter and Active Directory. So, platform service controller, user authentication and authorization service is responsible to pick your username and password on the screen, what you type, where you will type. Normally, if you log, if whenever you log into the screen, you'll get that login screen, right? VMware login. So in that screen, you type the username and password. That username and password will be collected by platform service controller and send it to the authentication for Active Directory. Once Active Directory says, yes, this user is having valid user account and password is correct. Then platform service controller will allow you to log in into vCenter. Otherwise, it will give you error on screen username and password is not matching or user does not exist or whatever the error message that is populated on the screen that user authentication and authorization will be managed by platform service controller this is second task first task license management second task user authentication and authorization and there is a third task you call it as certificate management i will show you that as well certificate management okay so imagine it will perform these three tasks it, it has many services and it will perform many other many other tasks okay but majorly you need to remember these three and vCenter you know the vSAN distributed switch HA DRS FT and so on XYZ whatever the features that you talk about everything is supported by vCenter it will do some task and it will do some task clear in embedded deployment, what happens? Both the services will be deployed on one VM. Which VM? The VM which is up and running now. This VM. Okay, on this VM, both the services are running. Okay, now if you select the external deployment, you need to have two different VMs. One is your vCenter VM, another one is your PSC VM. So both will be integrated. So for your vCenter, Two servers are running in the back end if you select external deployment. That is the difference. Clear? Or any questions? Hello? Hello? Understand? Hello. Embedded deployment, external deployment. You understand the difference? No. 
Ve weg. Sunil, you understand the difference between this? Hello, hello. Yes or no? Just give me hello. some inputs. Hello, Vivek. Yeah, hello. My network quality is good here. Data quality is good. It's getting and it's getting proper. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Yeah, you can you can be on mute. You, yeah, you can be on mute and uh, you can watch it. It's breaking. Yeah, you have a network issue, man. I guess you are traveling somewhere. It's okay. Be on mute, Sunil. You able to understand it, right? Yes. Yes, yes. But, okay. Uh, a, bo both embedded and external uh, के लिए uh, deployment के लिए एक v v center का uh, server चाहिए. Yes. दोनों में भी. Yes. Okay. Okay. So okay. yeah, guys, be on mute. Okay. Uh, okay. So it it will uh, help me to stop the background noise. Right. So let's see where we are with the deployment it is almost finished okay we'll wait for a few minutes okay so once this is finished what you have to do you have to continue with the you have to continue with the configuration part Okay, let's minimize this. Your VCSA application is, if we look at, yes, it is up and running. See, it automatically added one <coughs> host name, and also this system is up and running. This is your vCenter server appliance. Still, it is deploying something on the background. We have to wait until this finishes. Okay, so what I will do is I'll just pause this recording for a while. Once the deployment is done, we'll continue with the configuration. Is that fine? Okay, let me pause. Yeah, just resumed. If you look at the deployment has been completed and you have successfully deployed your vCenter server with embedded platform service controller and you to proceed with the stage two of the deployment process appliance setup click continue if you exit you can continue with the this name 5480 slash is the port number which will help you to which will help you to configure your vCenter server appliance. Now, deployment is compl completed. You need to do the configuration part still. Right? Okay. Let's, let's go ahead with the configuration part. Continue. Okay. Setup. Next, so what it will do, it will retrieve the current settings, what has been deployed. Synchronize time with ESXi host, yes, I don't have an NTP server, again it will throw the time errors and stuff, I don't want to face it, so I'll, I'll use whatever the ESXi base, ESXi time is there, use the same time, I don't have an issue, whether I'm in India or in the US or deploying somewhere, NTP server is responsible to manage network time. Uh, using an NTP protocol called network time protocol. NTP means network time protocol. I don't want to use that. So SSH, enable the SSH for your appliance so that you can log in and do some troubleshooting. Next, you are about to modify IP settings. Okay, 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 my directory calling. Okay, fine. Now, what else? Configure SSO vspira.local v dot local is the domain and username default username is administrator and set the password this is your appliance 
or vCenter server login, default login, username and password. Remember. Next. You want to send the output? No. If, if there is any errors. Okay. Now, you see vCenter server appliance, IP address, so on and so stuff and username and password finish okay so configuration is the configuration is about to start what kind of configuration now the appliance is deployed and it will now set up the appliance as per your configuration what you have mentioned you mentioned a tiny configuration right and you gave the username and password and you gave the IP addresses and stuff everything is now in place now it's still just deploying that sorry just configuring that appliance as per your customization okay so again this will take around 15 minutes okay so once this setup is done then we are good to proceed with rest of the configurations within the v center so what i will do i'll pause this uh, i'll pause this set video once again once the complete setup is done appliance setup is done then we'll resume the video once again and then we'll configure the v center configure the vCenter in the sense how you can add your host into vCenter what kind of customization that you have to perform inside the vCenter those stuff we'll see and we'll close it this may take till 11 o'clock it's okay be available so I'll, I'll pause this video just keep watching it once this is done we will resume it it won't take much time sometimes it will take around 15 minutes okay so let me pause you okay if you look at Appliance is deployed successfully and installed successfully. Now you can you can access your appliance using this URL. Let's see. <coughs> then close. So this is your vCenter server appliance. How to log in? What is the username? Administrator at the rate vSphere.local and the password what we set. Let's see. Okay, so you'll see your vCenter server appliance. This is your vCenter server. There are expired or expiring license in your inventory. By default, you don't have any licenses, right? Because we haven't we haven't got the licenses. I have downloaded it for testing purpose. By default, anything you download from VMware, you'll get it for 60 days with full functionality. So no need to worry about licensing and stuff. Close this out. Okay. So this is, if you look at, this is your vCenter server and CPU exhaustion, okay. reset to green because CPU is taking, is taking, is taking Hello. Yeah, yeah, be on mute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I have uh, access to vCenter uh, my office. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If, if you can demonstrate on that, I can log in there. It's okay, yeah. It's, 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 it's okay, okay, yeah. It's, 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 I'm sorry, be on mute. Yeah. I'm sorry, be on mute. Fine. Okay, so for the first time when you log in, this is, you ha you need your vCenter server address. Okay, you have your vCenter server address, and just put it on browser, and it will ask for username and password. By default, Okay, username and password is administrator at the red dot local and the password what we set. But that password you will not be, you will not get that password and uh, username because your organization has AD integrated authentication. So you have to try with your 
uh, compucom slash whatever the username we have and the password you will be able to log in into vCenter and when you log into the vCenter for the first time you will see empty vCenter looks like this so how to configure this first we need to create a data center data center a simple logical collection of your objects I will say all all your objects means where, where we deployed this data center, uh, this vCenter, imagine in US, East US, we deployed this vCenter and it, in the same data center, you have somewhere around 100 hosts. All the 100 hosts will be managed through this vCenter, right? Okay, so data center is collection of all the 100 hosts and virtual machines on top of the 100 hosts and the network, what you have configured with that 100 host and the storage which is associated with that 100 host. Everything will be managed via one data center. Okay, East US. Broad DC. Broad DC. Okay, just one moment. I'll be back in two, two minutes. I'll be back in two minutes and then we'll resume someone has came okay okay so I said data center is simple collection of your all the devices or objects you can call it as so once you create a data center you can add your host you can create your clusters you can add your data stores and networks everything will be under your data center so this is your main object so this is a logical representation there's nothing nothing to do with the operational stuff but more of a logical representation I'll say and but everything will be tracked under this and on the back end on the back end I forgot to explain uh, I'll explain that in some time add host okay right click on DC right click on your data center add host you need to provide your host details but before I provide the host details let me check do I have my host? Uh, my bad, wrong password. Fresh. Because I haven't powered on the ESXA host, right? These three hosts just simply power on. I need to add these hosts into vCenter. Recollect the picture. Go back. This picture. Okay. So this is your vCenter, which is up and running. And you integrated with your Active directory because you need a DNS. This is your DNS server. Okay, on these three hosts, now we are adding them into vCenter. Let's see. <coughs> so, still they are powering on. Once they completely power on, you can add them into vCenter. So, what we will do is we will add the host into vCenter and we will stop it for today. And tomorrow onwards, we will discuss the rest of the stuff. So 192, 168, 30 .51. or else ECS we are ESXI 01 dot this also works. Okay, so it's up and running. Let me try it out. Next, what is the username? Root. And what's the password? Observe carefully. Now, observe carefully. Right? It it has generating, system has generating one SSH, SHA thumbprint certificate. Means, you are adding host into vCenter and you provided the root password to add. 
so what it what it did it created a certificate out of this and it this certificate will be saved inside the v center on the v center there is a back in the back end there is a database called postgres sql database open source database which will maintain all the entries okay in that it will save this key this is this key is saved to give you passwordless authentication every time when you click on this host if it is not saved the certificate is not saved okay whenever you click on a host it will ask for give me username password give me username password so certificate management will be done by whom we are discussing little earlier go back <coughs> said certificate management will be done by whom platform service controller third one okay now what it is doing it is generating a certificate and yes certificate has been generated and your host is discovered next there is no license again it is checking for license who is checking for license platform service controller is checking what is the license which is assigned in ESXi host there is nothing it is said okay it will expire in 60 days I'm fine next <coughs> lockdown mode means you have a ESXi okay you have a ESXi how you will access it you have a ESXi server how you will access it you will open the browser right you will open the browser and put the name or IP in the browser and it will ask for username and password root and whatever the password you simply log in and you can manage this host just one moment just one moment really sorry yeah okay so you have a host name or IP you simply log in through browser and manage it how many hosts you have imagine I said in your in, in this example we have around 100 hosts okay my question is is it, it is really is it really feasible to access all the 100 hosts over the browser and check for the errors or something in the morning not feasible right so that is the reason why we are using this vcenter appliance or vcenter server okay inside the vcenter server when you are adding a host it is saying how you want to manage this host if if the lockdown mode is enabled any host with with the lockdown mode enabled is not accessible from outside means individually you have the IP you put it on browser it will work but if you enable lockdown mode lockdown enable you will not be able to access it from outside browser only you can access through vCenter understand if you disable the lockdown mode if you disable the lockdown mode you can access through outside and you can access through inside the vCenter means I have one host 192 168 30.51 is the host now it is working right now it is working I have a root username and password You are able to log in and manage it fine but if you enable the lockdown mode strict lockdown mode this will not work you don't sorry username and password yeah this will not work individually you cannot log in what happened man individually you cannot log into ESXi server like this that is the problem <clears throat> okay so some organizations they will enable strict lockdown mode because they don't want to allow users to log in into individual ESXi server for their day-to-day -day operations they want everyone through login via vCenter only because of the security and concerns so in my lab I won't enable it disable next <clears throat> VM placement I don't have any VMs to place simply next finish so you'll see add standalone host it is now added let me add other two as well what is the use east us pr esx i02 
root and password next again it will generate one more key new servers right one more certificate next no license no lockdown mode there's no vms to place finish second server is added let me add third server third ESX server yeah ESX is your three dot Okay, third one, same username and password. The same key, it, it will generate one more key for third server. Lockdown mode, nothing, finish. So I have added all the three hosts inside vCenter. Now I can click on any host and manage it. You know, I don't, I don't need to log into each and every host now. So I have three hosts, I can simply log in and manage from here itself. See, all the three configurations are reporting here. If I have a VMs inside the v ESXi, they will show up here. Done? So this is how you configure your vCenter for the first time and create the data center and add a host into the data, data center. Now, how many such hosts that I can add with the configuration I deployed? I have selected tiny deployment, so I can add around 10 host right 10 host and i can run 100 vms on top of it that is the limitation and also if i have enterprise level and large configuration how many hosts i can add here up to 2000 and around 15000 or 25000 vms i can run from one v center okay so you look at those figures in the video on the uh, when you when you are uh, watching the video you see when i select the vcenter server size tiny small medium large extra large if i select extra large there's a maximum 2000 host you can add it here 2000 host you can add here so now you see the data center configuration you have three hosts and only one network that we'll see later on and each host has 6 gb ram so your your vcenter capacity or your data center capacity is 18 gb ram in real time each host has 128 gb example so you will show it will sorry it will show here 128 into 3 that's the total capacity and how much used it will show you I similarly how many number of cpus similarly how much storage consolidated i mean combined all three it will show up here okay we have a lot of these options okay anyway we are going to use this on a day-to-day -day basis so you'll get some hands-on on this we'll not spend much time on these options what is this what what is the significance of this anyway we are going to use it in a day-to-day -day. so you'll, you'll get habituated with those options right any questions up to this i still need to create a cluster i still need to create a cluster and manage it i'll, I'll explain that later on for now i've added host standalone host into vcent that's it okay i'll stop here i'll stop here okay uh, if you have any questions you can ask me Yeah. Any questions, Sunil? Vivek? No, no. no. Vivek? Are you there? Fine. I'll stop this recording here. Okay. And we'll catch up tomorrow and we'll discuss a couple of more things in, in the v inside the vCenter what all the things that you manage it what all the things that you need to understand in, a, in your day to day related to v VMware vCenter and then we'll start the basic networking configuration and stuff tomorrow okay 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 Fine. yeah thanks bye